Hello boys and girls, Ant here again, and today I'm playing a game called This Book is a Dungeon. It's apparently about a book that's also a dungeon, I'm guessing from the title. This book is a dungeon, this dungeon is a book. Very good. Um, it's a twine game, which I haven't actually played a twine game in ages. I tried making a twine game recently, and um, it didn't work well, I'm not very good at that sort of thing. <laughs> um, I can't get my head around all that coding, what HTML, whatever it is you're using. But um, yeah, it's a nice little format, it reminds me of the old text adventure stuff, so I thought I'd give this a try. Um, I don't even know anything about this game, I just basically opened up my email one day and there was a code for this in there, from the developer. And um, we hadn't requested it or anything, just turned up. So let's give it a try, we're going to choose start from the beginning. Hopefully there's no terrible voice acting from me. Oh, yeah, it started now. Tick, 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 you remember a time when you used to steal aching glances at the clock, praying for the strike of a merciful hour that had finally set you free. Well, I'm guessing we click you free. Temporary release from the shackles of the tiresome workday, you'd eagerly rush home, shed your work clothes like a burdensome second skin, and flit off into the night to join friends for merriment and mischief. This is getting a little bit, um, fanciful. Nice wording, I like it. Those days are gone. Click on that. The shift came on slowly at first. Sharp pains, dizziness, restlessness, insomnia. It's a good film, you should watch it. Um, but as, ever more, as even more unsettling changes tightened their grip within you, it became clear something was very wrong. I'll click that as well. Sure, I'll click things. So I've got to clean my glasses, I've got dust on the lens. I'm going to try and read this without my glasses. Poked, prodded, examined, analysed, a battery of tests, a gauntlet of medical pummeling, and anxious uncertainty. And then, the waiting. I would have put, like, um, ellipses there, I would have put ellipses, yeah, whatever. It's my way of writing. When the call finally came, you already knew the answer before the words rolled off the lips, rasping away on the other end of the line. Lost in an echo chamber, your mind, you, you mind passed, you, you mind. As I lost in the cha lost in an echo chamber, you mind passed only snippets of the doctor's news. Pass aid, pass, pass aid, pass, passed as in taken in. I can never pronounce that word properly. Your mind, should probably say. The ones that stung the most. It's terminal. A year left to live. Maybe two at best. I'm so, so sorry. Oh, shit, we're dying. And then you're alone. This is like, um, Jack and Ori, the game. What's the American version of that? Reading Rainbow? I don't know. Now time is your enemy. Siphoning away at the last of you every passing moment. Drain in the light for colour from your world. This is something I didn't figure out when I was doing Twine. You could put links in the middle of the text. I wasn't doing that, I just went and put options down the bottom and I was trying to make a Twine game. Not very imaginative. Leaving an emptying shell of aching hopelessness and dark anticipation in its wake. The clacking of keyboards, the ringing of phones, a can and casual banter of clueless co-workers is a steady ache. Oh, this is very dramatic. When's the game start? It rakes at the frayed corners, pulls at the tattered edges of your weary mind. But the appointed hour has arrived. It dampens the din, if only for a short while. Tomorrow's another day, at, for them at least. Ooh, for you? Possibly. You linger for just a minute longer. Let an eager parade filter through the exit. The last to leave, you close up, lock the door and pull, on, pull your overcoat tight around you. A spitting mist turns it to a downpour, well before you reach the dry sanctuary, sanctuary Jesus, of the putrid, putrid subway entrance. I'm getting all tongue-tied. This sounds like my general walk home from work, which I discovered my shoes love to take on water. That's been fantastic recently. The stairs are a descent into unpleasant smells and, hus and hustled near misses as bustling crowds crush together to get to and from their mundane nine-to-fives. For a moment, you miss the simplicity of routine, the promise of continuance. Ooh. Staring at the edge of the platform, you look down at the electrified tracks. Wind picks up in the tunnel, signaling a rapidly approaching train. Your mind wanders. You imagine what it'd be like to be caught on the tracks right as the train comes barreling through at 60 miles an hour. Is that how they go? I thought they'd go faster than that. Death is a beacon, drawing you ever closer. It swells and dances on the sparkling steel girders below. It teases and taunts you, only inches away. Come to me, whispers the siren call. Ooh. 
You don't want to fall onto train tracks, man. I saw that anime Gans. It's like all sorts of shit goes down when you get hit by a train. It's not yet time. We take a few steps back from the yellow line. Twenty minutes feels like an eternity in the packed subway car. Oh, so we just we've got on the subway then. Damp, sweaty, exhaustion and regret mixed with promise and delusion. A wagon full of cattle, oblivious, tuned out, numb. This guy's been on London Underground. Definitely. Stop by stop, the opening and closing of door fi fins the herd. <laughs> oh, I said fings the herd. It's a welcome, Cullen, a shifting of space, a loosening of knots. Soon you're at the soon you're the last and you can breathe easy again. But you still scan the car with a quick glance at a habit. One last time to make sure you're truly alone. Except you're not quite alone. There's a small leather satchel sitting on an empty seat in the far corner of the car. Cool. You glance around again, not trusting your weary eyes. There's still not a living soul, save your own. The handrail is sticky with grime from the clutches of 10,000 dirty fingers filth definitely London underground. You wince at its touch, but it offers stability as you work your way to the other end of the car, towards the orphan satchel. Okay then. I don't know if satchels can be orphaned, they don't have parents. Unless it. Oh, there's a joke about carrier bags, isn't there? No, I'm not going to do it. Where did its owner go? The bag is weathered and worn. Some tired soul will no doubt be missing its contents, you gather. A high-pitched whine pierces the air as the car rocks and rattles. The lights flicker. 32nd Street, it's your stop. Time to go. Take the bag or leave it there. Well, um, I'm just going to have a sip of coffee to think about this. I would imagine leaving it there would probably end the game. So we take the bag. You instinctively reach out and swipe the bag, figuring it's better to get off your hands than left to wander the dark tunnels inside a giant metal beast alone. Thick, stale underground air turns cool and damp as you emerge from the city's high, spree, strips, high, uh, city's high speed intestines and hit the noisy streets above. I don't think I'm going to render this video in um, 60 frames per second. I think I'll render this at 30 frames per second. I don't think it's going to need the 60 frames per second teach treatment I usually give videos. <laughs> 340 steps there. That's a specific number of steps. You're at the door of your second story apartment, fumbling the keys, muttering under your breath. The lock finally gives way. That's really close to the subway. 340 steps isn't far. I've counted steps before. I had a Pikachu thing. Peeling off your soap coat, you drop everything on the table, kick off your shoes and check your answering machine. I'll get in 27 frames per second there. You have no new messages. No surprises there. Ignoring the pile of unwashed dishes and the empty fridge, you sidle back to the table and remember, the bag. This is how good horror movies start. Inside the bag, you find an old book. Oh, there it is. There's the book. There's no music on this, is there? I can't hear anything. You can put music in Twine games, I think, if I remember rightly. You can um, embed YouTube videos. That was something I was going to do. I was going to do a video game about someone um, sitting around watching YouTube videos all day. And it was going to be sort of taking the piss out of the way YouTube... You know, builds its videos together. How it ties you to other people, mostly Minecraft videos. This will get linked to a Minecraft video. Like I bet on the right hand side right now, there's a Minecraft video link there. The book is aged and weathers. Its covers adorned with an ominous skeletal being that looks half human, half serpent. The title is written in a language you don't have the tongue to decipher. Oh, are we going to get a skeleton man? I guess I've got to open the book. Right, unlocking the old book, you open the cover and flip through the dusty pages. It appears blank to you. Flip to the first page, flip to a random page, flip to the last page. Right, now, Twine games are quite a lot like Choose Your Own Adventures, aren't they? So what we should do is go to the last page, read up all the best endings and figure out how to get there from here. But um, I think I'm going to go for the first page because I don't want to rock the boat. Random's just, that's just chaos. No, you can't do that. The frail pages seem brittle to the touch, as if they're in danger of crumbling into nothingness, yet your fingers resonate with an unknown energy. Fine, we'll do a random page. You flip to a random page and find nothing, as your eyes are playing tricks on you, or did you see the faint glimmer of words fading into view just now? Well, I saw the frames per second counter I've switched on the steam cover the sides, but let's go to the last page. You turn to the last page, nothing. First page? The frail pages seem too brittle. We've already... Last page? Random page? Another random page. You flip a random page. Yeah, did you see? No. Flipping the pages, a faint flicker of ink catches your eye. You flip back several pages to try to find it. After much serving, you uncover the page that sports a faint drawing of a keyhole sketched in pencil. Put your dick in it. 
it's instinctive you instinctively reach out a finger and trace it over the drawing a sudden sharp pain a paper cut spurs you to pull your hand away quickly how do you get a paper cut from the flat part of the page looking down you notice the keyhole sketch has changed into a fanged serpent oh that's how spots of your blood dot the page the room swims you feel faint and disoriented you just got bitten by a paper snake now that will do that to you your vision goes blank as you hit the floor sharp impact slams your temple jolting your synapses oh that went and it sends a right a raw white heat burning through your consciousness then empty space Ooh. you fall through the black void I didn't know you could change the background to black god I'm learning all that toy here erasing the past erasing the future only the present what is happening where am I? This is just doing itself. I don't have to do anything now. I'm going to move this off the screen because that, you know, that's ruining the mood. Who am I? Jackie Chan. What is the darkness eating away inside of me? And then... Dum dum dum. A light. Can I click it? Whoa. You awaken in a small chamber illuminated by the light of a single flickering torch resting in a, so in a sconce at the far wall. Is that sconce or sconce? I don't know, this is old English beyond my old English knowledge. The sharp proper pulsing behind your eyes fades quickly, but an unpleasant chill is creeping in. You notice words scratched in the stone floor. I saw it, I see it says inventory. There's a map. It looks like, um... Do you remember the, the little PDA thing they did for the, like the Dreamcast had and the PlayStation? He had that little, little memory card with the screen on it. That looks like the sort of graphics you got on that. It's quite cool. <laughs> you notice words scratched on the stone floor. At this distance, the torchlight is too dim to make out what they say. You grab the torch from the wall, the wall sconce, and take it. Take comfort in the subtle warmth it breathes across your face. You can now get a better look at surround at your surroundings. I keep skipping words I'm like an idiot. I'm a moron. I need more coffee. <laughs> Holding the torch closer to the floor, you clearly see an inscription carved there. It reads chapter one, why the walls bleed? That's okay. That's a good question to ask. Oh, not even really, really something to find out. A heavy wooden door at the south appears to be the only way in or out of this pit. I'm guessing we're here. There you go. The door creaks and shudders open as you strain against its weight. Right. My instinct tells me to go this way. You find yourself in a larger stone room that is cavernous and empty. The echoing sound of water droplets comes from a passage to the west. You catch a whiff of something familiar, something out of place. Is that? You also notice another passageway to the east, as well as a door you just came through. I could go back through the door I just came through. If I go this way, I'm at a dead end. There's a dot, dot, dot. Is that? Let's, let's find out what that is. Citrus? Is that citrus? Oh, the smell. <laughs> yeah. I lost track. I didn't... Uh, God, I'm so tired today. Right, let's go east. Pushing further into the unknown depths, your eyes plays tricks on, in the torchlight. What lurks in the darkness ahead, skittering away just beyond the glow of your torch. As you round the corner, you notice a small alcove in the passageway here. The corridor continues to the east, and the northern passage leads to the corner back to the west. I'm gonna actually going to go into this, this one. And an open door to the north, passage to the east. Western passage, right, and this is where we wanted to go. The narrow corridor opens into a dead-end room that reeks of over-ripened fruit. You're blasted with a sweet, pungent odour which nearly overpowers you. Looking around, you notice a vicious, reddish substance draining out of several large round holes in the wall. Probably blood. This mysterious fluid drips down a slow, syrupy cascade, collecting in stone basins carved along the base of the wall. The only exit is through the passage you came into to the east. Let's look at the reddish substance. There's the reddish substance. That's blood. The sweet odour is animating from this odd liquid. You decide to leave it alone for now. Okay, we'll... Leave the blood alone. Let's go east. Right. It's a small alcove in the passageway here. Let's look in the alcove. There's a large crack in the wall of the alcove. It's not big enough for you to fit through. Who knows what could be in there. Uh, my instinct says reach into the hole. Could lose an arm. Whatever. <laughs> you reach into the hole and immediately recall is a tea main mass of stinging, biting insects warms up your arm. It takes minutes to fling them off. It takes a minute to fling them off. That, that's fantastic. That's exactly what I expected, to be honest. What do I expect? I'll put my hand in a hole. 
Right, corridor continues to the east at Northern Passage. The Northern Passage leads to the corner, that's where we came, so we go east. Passage extends west and to the north. Let's go north. A pile of bones and skulls lay scattered across large stone slabs in the centre of the chamber. Along the far wall, a series of sharp hoods dangled from the ceiling by chains. It is clear that much suffering befell the poor soul who came, who met their fate in this place. Smears of dried blood, now darkened with time and decay, paint a macabre scene. A passageway extends to the west. The southern door opens into a long hallway. That's the way we just came. Let's look at the bones. The bones have been picked clean and show markings of being gnawed on. You notice two human skulls amidst this of the human skulls. Searching through the remains, you disturb one of the human skulls, which rolls off the stone slab and clatters on the floor. Beneath it, you find a scrap of paper. Yes, yeah, have that. The aged parchment is faded and covered in drops of long, dried blood. It reads, This awful place. What have I done? What have I become? Please forgive me. Okay, we forgive you. So the sharp hooks. Imagine what it, is, what it might feel like to be strung up on one of these rusty thin things hooked into your guts, waiting to be eaten alive. Then you banish the thought from your mind. I'd put it in the shoulder blades, really. There was something else on the bones, wasn't there? My phone just went crazy. What was that about? Oh, just an advert. Right. Feeling compelled to sift through someone else's remains, <laughs> you poke for the bone heap and find an old rusty knife. Can I take it? I want the knife. Fine. Don't let me take it then. Let's go west. There are people there. Um, the floor has collapsed in the hallway ahead, which is flooded with stagnant, murky water. On the opposite side lies an ornate door. You peer into the depths and wonder what might lie waiting for you beneath the shimmering surface. Chunks of rubble are crumbling off the side of the building, side of the wall at the edge of the hallway. Let's see if we can knock the rubble. You pick up a fixed sized chunk of rubble and hurl it in the water. It splashes, then sinks. The water's surface comes splashing to life as something makes quick work of the rubble. Right, quickly skirt around the edges of the corridor while the unknown beast is distracted. Yay, yeah, we made it. Beyond the ornate door, you enter a nicer room. Ah, yeah, nice room. Cool. The stone is more chiselled and refined. Red tapestries hang on the walls, and the decor is comforting upgrade from the dank, crumbling corridors you just crawled out of. Four tall display cases are positioned around the fancy chamber. <laughs> I do like a good fancy chamber. Right, you also see... I don't want to go for those. Let's look at the display cases. At a cursory glance, the towering display cases appear to be filled with greenish fluid. There's also something else inside them, too. Ah, oh, have we got... Jar heads in jars here. Investigate display one. Preserver in the green fluid is a desiccated corpse that looks like it might have once been human. Awesome. It is missing both arms, and the body's one remaining leg is tethered by a chain latched to the base of the display. The mouth has been crudely sewn shut, and a cluster of worm-like creatures are floating out from a gap in the stitching. Hot. Right, looking at all these display cases. You find a wolf-like creature hanging upside down in the green fluid. Its poorly stitched stomach cavity has burst open from the inside display. Oh, this is lovely. With ropes of long, stringy worms floating out of it. It's alongside its entrails. Looking more closely at the gruesome display, you notice the creature's eye twitch and blink. Oh, shit. Let's look at the third one. It's going to have a face hugger in it and just go splat against the glass. Two severed human torsos have been stitched together in a gory manner. Gory mirror image at the waist. Ropey clusters of worms are spilling out from the scene. Shouldn't use worms to stitch these things together, man. This one is empty, drained of its fluids, and lacking a grisly companion within. Oh, that's for me. Right. Uh, closet door to the east. Let's look in there. The door is locked. Right. Let's go north. Oh, hello, it's a Skeksis. You walk up the small stairs and open the door and enter the sitting chamber. The clanking of chains draws further into the room. Bound to the throne, resting at the far wall chamber, you find a creature with the body of a man and the head of a bird. Nice. It looks off to the distance, unblinking. Uh, let's talk to the creature. You step closer. The creature speaks with a slow, raspy cadence. Ah, I feel a presence. I could do a skeletal. Skeletal's not really raspy. I could do skeletal, though. What is it? What is it? It's it. What is it? It's it. What is it? Oh, what could it want with me? Little me shackled away in these filthy metal irons. I'm doing skeletal gradually, aren't I? Filthy little irons to hold my flesh and bone. It is a strange thing indeed. It's not really raspy though, is it? So very strange and fleshy it is. It reeks of other world, doesn't it? 
He's talking a lot, isn't he? Little me wonders why it stands there, poised with some unknown purpose. The thump, thump, thump of its heart beats with hair fast. Beats a hair faster now, doesn't it? Like a tap, tap, tap of ticking time. This is reading that. I need a pop filter for this mic when I'm reading stuff like tap, tap, tap. What manner of fluid flows beneath its skin, wonders little me blood. Blood. Ah, its breath is tinged with wicked curiosity. Oh, what could it want with little me, then? God, you're poetic type. Does it seek to put the sharpness to my flesh and spill my essence to the floor? Does it take my shiny? Does it feed me delicious sweet nectar I crave? I miss it so dearly. Or perhaps it had something else in mind for little me. Well, I don't have anything now, do I? Oh, I've got a rusty knife. I did pick up a knife. Hmm. I didn't notice that. Right, well, I don't want to stab him. That'd be mean. Uh, something else. What else could it possibly want with me? Uh, let's free the bird creature. You reach out to test the strength of the chains and the creature gets anxious. Eh? It wishes to be free. Oh, yes, yes. That is very good. What will we use to break the chains? Uh, rusty knife. The knife isn't sharp or strong enough to break the chain and free the creature. You need something else. Uh, search more. Search around for something big to smash the crane. Still nothing. Search more. You search around behind for something big to smash chains. Behind the throne you find a large piece of stone that might be big enough. Boom, hefty rock. Let's try the large rock. You heft the large rock and smash the chain till it finally snaps, probably crushing the bird man's hand. Uh, onwards, yeah. A sudden flurry of excitement wishes over the creature. It frees me, little me. What a delight! He's probably going to kill me now. Then it took, looks up at you and cocks his head in an angle, rising up to its full height. Even hunched over, the creature is much taller than it first seemed. Yeah, not that little. I'm going to stab it with the rusty knife then. It looks down his hands and flexes each talon finger. It will make a pretty addition. Addition. God, I fumbled that line. Before you can react, the creature is upon you with lightning speed, hungrily tearing at it to break your break, tearing its beak into your flesh. Oh shit! You've perished in one of many horrible ways. Try and seek to change your fate. The end. <laughs> Oh well, <laughs> I died. That didn't go too well, did it? I just thought you try being kind. Obviously, that's not ideal. Um, I should find some music to chuck over this in the background. I'll find something that I won't get content ID'd for. Um, but yeah, that's this book is a dungeon. Um, no point in me charging all the way through that again. But you can jump into the first dungeon. You've seen me do the beginning part, so if you play this, you can just jump into the first dungeon and see how it goes. That's quite interesting. Give that another go, like at some point, and see if I can uh, work my way through it. Because I used to like text adventures when I was a kid. Um, I wasn't very good at them. Like I tried like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and uh, there was another one, a sci-fi one or something. I used to try and play. Terrible at them. But text adventures, thanks to stuff like this, have sort of come back gradually in a bit more of a user-friendly way. But uh, yeah, that's this book is a dungeon. Um, thanks for sending me the game. That was really. That's quite cool. It's available on Steam now. I think it's like £4.79. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's got some real potential. I like the look of that. I'm going to keep playing it and uh, see how it goes. And hopefully I'll pick some totally appropriate music to play over it. I'll catch you later. Bye.